1A. And uh, I'm Marty Lynch. I'm the executive director of Lifelong, the health center organization that runs the Adult Day Health and the clinic upstairs and a number of other clinics. So it's a pleasure to, to see you all. Uh, let me just uh, say a little bit about the proposition and the state budget situation, and then I'm going to turn it over to Kim, who's going to take it from there. Uh, aside from the propositions, we already have major concerns about the state of California budget. You guys probably know here as best as anyone, because one of the things that the governor has proposed to cut is adult day health care. One of the things the governor has proposed to cut is adult day health care for elderly and disabled people. Boo. Now, Boo is right. The other, the other big cut that the, is already in the budget for July 1st at the state level is dental care for adults on Medi-Cal. What does that mean? That's dental, that's dental care for you, it's dental care for all elderly folks on Medi-Cal, all disabled folks on Medi-Cal, lots of homeless people, so those are already in the state budget right now, and those are tragic cuts. They're bad cuts. We're working to turn them around because it's not right that people shouldn't have dental care, a dietary care, adult day health care. Those are basic parts of basic primary health care to keep people as healthy as they can be given. Thank you. Those are basic services for people. So, we have to turn that around. On top of that, we have these propositions coming up. Proposition 1A is the one that, amongst other things, would put a cap on how much the state can spend into the future on services for people in this state. We are already in trouble with the kind of cuts that are going down right We now. appreciate the fact that folks don't want to make these cuts that the governor is talking about, but we have to we have to do better on the other side as well. So, I'm going to stop and let Kim Geron from the Faculty Association in the Cal State System get up here and take it from here. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Mary. I'm going to act as MC and introduce uh, our speakers. We first will have uh, Betty Tol Olson Jones from the Oakland Education Association and then Julia Cato. So, uh, Betty, would you like to come up first and say a few words? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm really glad to be here. Um, I'm, my name is Betty Olson Jones, and I'm the president of the Oakland Education Association. I represent about 3,000, close to 3,000 teachers in the public schools in Oakland. And we go all the way from preschool through kindergarten to 12th grade and adult education. Um, some of the adult education teachers are represented by the AFT, but we represent parts, parts of them. We also represent social workers and librarians and speech therapists and substitutes and a whole gamut of teachers. And we are being slashed like never before. Across the state, thousands, 26,000 teachers got pink slips. In Oakland, we've lost over 250 programs that serve frail elders and disabled adults. A society that doesn't take care of its most, most vulnerable citizens, from the youngest to the oldest, is a society that has priorities completely wrong. And in California, you may not know that we are the eighth largest economy in the world. And yet, we are 47th and probably close to 50th now in per pupil funding in our, in our public schools. And we're 50th in the ratio of teachers to students in the country. But we're also number one in prison spending. That tells me that we have our priorities completely wrong. I fight the majority of people for a budget that serves the needs of our citizens. Now, OEA, the organization that I represent, took a different position from our parent position, the California Teachers Association. Unfortunately, CTA is supporting all the propositions. And we made the decision that we would have to be in opposition to our parent organization on this one because we believe it's just bad public policy to support anything that would cap vital social services and health care 
all of which our students' families need. Education cannot be separated from the health care and the social services of the society. Our kids come to school with problems. They come to, come to school needing medical care, dental care, uh, care. Many of them are cared for by their grandparents. And so we could not, in all good conscience, take a position of support for propositions that would seek to cap these very vital social services. Thank you very much, Betty. That was excellent. Our next speaker is Julia Cato, um, and she will talk about the impact on senior citizens, and she's with the California Alliance for Retired Americans. Thank you, and good morning. Good morning. Uh, um, before I start uh, about the implications for seniors, I'd like to say that um, last Friday I was leafleting against Proposition 1A at the California Democratic Convention in Sacramento, and one of the most uh, prevalent responses I got was, well, I really think it's bad, but I don't see what else we can do. Yeah. So I felt it was sort of my job to tell them what they could do. And uh, one of the things that, that they seemed to think that we would have no tax money if they didn't vote for this, and that's absolutely wrong. The tax uh, situation is stable for two years. Proposition 1A does not change anything for two years. If we don't vote for it at the end of two years, we have to do something else. It couldn't be any worse than Proposition 1A. So you're not going to hurt anybody by voting no on Proposition 1A. We'll still have the same amount of money for two years. Uh, prop the scary thing about Proposition 1A is that it's a constitutional amendment. Now, a constitutional amendment is an important thing, and we ought to go into it slowly and carefully and make sure that the language is very clear. We don't want gobbledygook that makes us spend half of what little money we have left in lawsuits while people fight over what it actually means. And that's exactly what we're getting with Prop 1A. It doesn't make sense. Nobody knows exactly what it means. It was written hastily and in fear. That's not the way we want to create a constitutional amendment. And the damn things are a lot harder to get rid of than they are to get in the first place. So I suggest we vote no on 1A and avoid it. So what it will do for seniors. Well, Marty told you a lot of what it will do for seniors. But you all know that if we're out of money now and we don't have enough and we've already started cutting senior services, if we, have, if we pass Prop 1A, we take more out of the fund and put in this miraculous rainy day fund, that means even less for everybody. And you know where they go to make the first cuts. Yes. You've all felt them. We've all felt them. And these kinds of cuts are destroying our communities and our neighborhoods. We need all the people in our communities. So I urge you, they say my time is up, so I urge you to vote no on Proposition 1A and tell everybody else. I'm Kim Gerard. I teach up at Cal State East Bay on Hayward on the Hill. Um, and I teach political science. And um, just a, a few things about what's happening to us in the Cal State system. We, we represent about 24,000 faculty, coaches um, in the state system. There's 23 California State University uh, campuses. And we've already faced cuts of $700 million since 2002. This year, 10,000 students were denied access to the CSU for the first time. So we, these are qualified students from Oakland and all around the state who've done, worked hard, done everything they were supposed to do to meet those qualifications, and have been told there's not enough resources, you cannot come into the CSU. In addition, our students have faced but, uh, fee increases of over 100% since 2003. There's another proposed 10% for us and another, I think, 9% 9, 9 for the UCs that's coming ahead. <laughs> students can't afford to go. We're locking them out. And on top of that, now we're told, oh, we're going to create a spending cap that's going to lock out future generations. You know, I was just talking to Betty. You know, they do the hard work to get folks to our, our institution, and now we're shutting the door. The community colleges are overflowing with students. They don't have enough room. San Jose State denied access to any community college transfer student this current spring semester. Again, hardworking students who've done everything they're supposed to do. So we can't afford a spending cap that's going to lock um, budget, bad budgets that we're in and other uh, 
public services for the foreseeable future. And that's why we must defeat this thing. The thing I read, somebody said somebody brought up Prop 13.